we would like also to diversify our investments. And the major part of investments will ultimately be foreign because of the problem of not finding enough uh, local securities in the market. We would have to look also at uh, foreign portfolios and um, create other funds um, with um, institutional investors abroad. And the SF would invest only in major markets. So we're not into um, speculative markets, we're not into emerging markets. From a sector perspective, it's important that um, the level of our investments are um, distributed as much as possible um, in order to um, reduce the, the risk to the total portfolio and our investment policy is quite clear there. We have investment restrictions, um, both by issuer and even on the um, issues themselves. We're not going to invest in companies which uh, produce armaments, for instance. We have taken a conscious decision um, to be a passive investor. Historically, sovereign wealth funds, especially after the financial crisis, were criticized. They were accused of shareholder activism, and therefore they, they invested with the purpose of controlling that entity. Um, however, with the Santiago principles, um, uh, things started to change. But if you look at the global distribution of sovereign wealth funds, there are roughly around 114 sovereign wealth funds and we have um, 40 in the African and Middle East area, around 30 in Asia, 30 in the Americas and about 14, 15 in Europe. I believe that um, the Eurozone will be strengthened the more countries uh, adopt or set up a sovereign wealth fund. I think that will add stability to the region, economic stability. Um, it would allow also for better planning, um, better financial planning. It might reduce the burden on the EU budget as well. Um, it will reduce the dependence on taxation, okay, um, to fund certain projects. I think it could also lead to more collaboration, even between sovereign wealth funds themselves. Sovereign wealth funds are not secret organizations. At the end of the day, uh, their main shareholder is the government itself in many countries. Um, so I think that um, sovereign wealth funds have a very important role to play, actually, especially in Europe. In terms of the social, investment part um, will continue our project on social housing which is a it is a three to four year program um, so it's quite intensive our investment in social housing is, is slightly different from other social housing projects we're trying to um, design the uh, buildings in such a way which will uh, be eco-friendly um, it will save tenants um, on water and electricity bills um, and um, we're looking into other aspects as well when it comes to um, people with disability. The way we're tackling the project is in a holistic manner. Sovereign wealth funds are set up uh, for various reasons. Um, most of the, so the major sovereign wealth funds are um, rather stabilization funds because the main export would be a commodity like oil or gas. Um, in the case of Malta, um, we don't have natural resources. If the uh, citizenship by investment program is fully taken up, we would expect the fund size to grow between 800 and 900 million euro. And obviously we're going to um, invest that money and uh, hopefully that, that, that figure will, uh, will grow uh, towards the uh, 1 billion mark eventually. The idea is also uh, intergenerational. I believe that um, what we're doing is actually benefiting um, every multi-citizen, um, not only present generations, but um, also future generations.